While Mortal Kombat is mainly known for its fast-paced action and brutal fatalities, it features a deep story filled with hopes, dreams, betrayals, and world-ending threats. I'm Keegan, and today we will be going through the entire history of all Mortal Kombat games, from the main entries in the game series to the lesser-known spin-offs. If you're an avid leaderboard fan, you may have already watched our previous Mortal Kombat timeline video. If you did, thank you for being such a faithful viewer. Our previous videos covered the main entries in the franchise, skipping some parts of the story for the sake of clarity and ignoring what happened in the Mortal Kombat spin-off games. This new, updated Mortal Kombat timeline will go more in-depth than our previous video, explaining all the major events from the main games and the spin-offs, so you know everything about the Mortal Kombat universe before the release of Mortal Kombat 12. The story of Mortal Kombat begins before the events of the very first game. Long before the rise of the Mortal Kombat heroes, there were only two immortal beings in the entire universe, the One Being and the Elder Gods. The One Being is the most powerful entity in the entire Mortal Kombat universe. It precedes all other life forms and fed on the essence of the Elder Gods to harness almost unlimited power. To stop the One Being and get their freedom, the Elder Gods created six powerful weapons called the Kamidogu. They shattered the One Being into six pieces, each containing one of the Kamidogu and part of the One Being's consciousness. These pieces eventually became the main realms of the Mortal Kombat universe. Earthrealm, Netherrealm, Outworld, Chaos Realm, Edenia, and Order Realm. While the One Being has been defeated, its consciousness remained hidden in the realms and eventually influenced their rulers to make them merge the realms back together and restore the One Being to its true form, at the risk of shattering the entire universe. To maintain order and balance throughout the realms, the Elder Gods decided to create a single elimination martial arts tournament that would determine their fates. If one realm wishes to conquer another and merge with it to gain more power, they would need to defeat their opponent's best warriors in 10 consecutive tournaments. The competition, held every 50 years, would be known as Mortal Kombat. The Mortal Kombat tournaments have sacred rules. They can only happen once every 50 years, cannot be declined by either party, and most importantly, winning 10 consecutive Mortal Kombat tournaments is the only way for a realm to conquer another one. Unfortunately, the Mortal Kombat tournaments are not enough to guarantee peace across the realms. Netherrealm attacks Outworld, which manages to repel the invasion thanks to its leader, the Dragon King Onaga. Following this attack, the Outworld forces start invading smaller realms to get stronger. Shao Kahn, a trusted advisor of Onaga, poisons the Dragon King to take control of the realm. As the new Emperor of Outworld, Shao Kahn is the first one to invoke the Mortal Kombat rule. He sends his best warrior against the ones from Edenia, a lush and fertile world that resembles the Garden of Eden. The Outworld wins 10 consecutive Mortal Kombat tournaments and merges with Edenia. Conquering Edenia is not not enough for Shao Kahn, and the Outworld leader sets his eyes on Earthrealm. Shao Kahn tasks the sorcerer Shang Tsung to organize a Mortal Kombat tournament, so that Outworld can win the right to merge with Earthrealm. Goro, a massive half-human half-dragon born with four arms, wins nine tournaments in a row for Outworld, which remains just one victory short of the ten victory streak needed to invade Earthrealm. Enter the first Mortal Kombat game, released in 1992 on arcade systems. This game takes place during the final Mortal Kombat tournament required for Outworld to merge with Earthrealm. Shang Tsung hosts the competition and requests the God of Thunder and Earthrealm Protector Raiden to take part in the tournament. Joining Raiden are Shaolin Monk Liu Kang, martial arts superstar Johnny Cage, and Lieutenant Sonya Blade from the US Special Forces Unit. Four fighters represent Outworld, Goro, the undefeated four-armed champion, Kano, the leader of the Black Dragon criminal organization, an undead ninja called Scorpion, and a mysterious assassin from the Lin Kuei clan, Sub-Zero. While the intentions of the Earthrealm heroes are pretty clear, save their world, the Outworld fighters have different goals than just beating the good guys as they join the Mortal Kombat tournament. Goro's goal is simple, he's the winner of the past 9 competitions and he wants to bring the trophy home one more time so that the Outworld can merge with the Earthrealm. Kano, the thug from the Black Dragon organization, entered the Mortal Kombat tournament because he heard rumors that Shang Tsung's palace was filled with gold, so he intends on looting everything he can. Sub-Zero, the assassin from the Lin Kuei clan, was paid a large sum of money to kill Shang Tsung during the tournament. The fourth Outworld fighter, Scorpion, is a resurrected ninja who believes Sub-Zero is the one who 
killed him, so he joins the Mortal Kombat challenge to defeat his alleged murderer. The Earthrealm fighters manage to defeat their opponents, and Liu Kang becomes the new champion of Mortal Kombat. Scorpion gets his revenge and seemingly kills Sub-Zero, sending his soul to the Netherrealm. Goro is nowhere to be seen after the end of the tournament and is believed to be dead. The leader of Outworld, Shao Kahn, isn't too happy to learn that his fighters lost the Mortal Kombat tournament. Shang Tsung begs the Emperor to spare his life and give him another chance to prove his worth. The Sorcerer suggests luring Earthrealm's warriors to compete in Outworld for another tournament, where they will meet certain death by Shao Kahn himself. The Emperor agrees, and the events of Mortal Kombat 2 begin. Liu Kang, Raiden, Johnny Cage, Scorpion, Shang Tsung, and his personal bodyguard Reptile join the tournament. Sub-Zero is also here, despite dying at the hands of Scorpion during the previous Mortal Kombat competition. Buckle up, because this is the first twist in the Mortal Kombat story. Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat 2 is not the same Sub-Zero as in Mortal Kombat 1. The new Sub-Zero is actually Kwai Liang, the younger brother of the original Sub-Zero, Bi Han. He was sent by the Lin Kuei clan to finish his brother's job and kill Shang Tsung. When he realizes that Kwai Liang is the younger brother of the Sub-Zero he killed, Scorpion secretly swears to protect him as retribution for slaying his brother. Five new characters join the competition. Baraka, one of Shao Kahn's enforcers, Jax Briggs, a member of the US Special Forces and friend of Sonya Blade, Kung Lao, a Shaolin monk, and Liu Kang's cousin, Katana, Shao Kahn's stepdaughter and personal assassin, and Melina, a clone of Katana created by Shang Tsung and adopted by Shao Kahn as his daughter. There's a reason that Shao Kahn has such a weird relationship with his so-called stepdaughter and made her an assassin on top of creating a clone of her. Remember when a long time ago, Outworld merged with Edenia? Katana was actually the princess from this realm before Shao Kahn took control and placed Katana under a spell to make her his loyal daughter and assassin. When Katana figures out the truth about Shao Kahn, she decides to side with the Earthrealm warriors and help them defeat the Outworld fighters. Melina finds out about her twin's plans and tries to defeat her. Katana kills Melina, revealing that she is no longer loyal to Shao Kahn. Despite the Outworld warriors' best efforts, Liu Kang wins the tournament once again, defeating Shao Kahn and his troops. But the Outworld Emperor is not ready to give up his plans of conquering Earthrealm. Mortal Kombat 3, released in 1995, takes the action up a notch. To finally take over Earthrealm, Shao Kahn enacts a 10,000-year-old plan. He uses his Shadow Priests, led by Shang Tsung, to revive Queen Sindel, the former ruler of Edenia, whom Khan forced to become his wife before she eventually committed suicide. But instead of bringing her back to Outworld, Shao Kahn revives his queen on Earthrealm, giving him a reason to go back and claim her. Shao Kahn opens a dimensional portal between the two realms, slowly turning Earthrealm into a part of Outworld. Through this portal, Shao Kahn claims the souls of billions of humans. Raiden manages to save a few souls from this assault, the ones that will defend Earthrealm in the upcoming Mortal Kombat tournament. To prevent the Earthrealm warriors from winning yet another Mortal Kombat tournament, Shao Kahn sends extermination squads to kill them. One of the squads, led by a centaur called Motaro, kills Johnny Cage. However, as his soul was protected by Raiden, Cage became one of the chosen warriors fighting against Khan's invasion. Jax finds out where Sonya and Kano were imprisoned in Outworld and frees them both. Jax and Sonya join the Earthrealm resistance, while Kano flees and joins Shao Kahn's forces. A former Black Dragon warrior called Cabal decides to join the rebellion as he learns that Kano is free, wanting to get his revenge on the one he believes is responsible for the accident that led him to depend on a respirator. Liu Kang, the reigning champion of Mortal Kombat, leads the rebellion against the Outworld Emperor, in hopes to save Earthrealm and Kitana's home realm of Edenia. A Native American shaman called Nightwolf joins the human resistance after he received visions that warned him about the imminent invasion of Earthrealm by Outworld. Stryker, the only survivor in New York City, also joins the other Earthrealm warriors. Remember Bi Han, the original Sub-Zero who was killed by Scorpion in the first Mortal Kombat? Well, he's back. But this time, he won't be called Sub-Zero or even Bi Han. When he died, his soul went to Netherrealm, and he became a demonic version of himself, called Noob Saibot. Meanwhile, the legendary clan of Chinese assassins, the Lin Kuei, wants to use the latest advancements in human technologies to turn their warriors into soulless machines. They select four ninja to serve as the first prototypes. Cyrax, Sector, Smoke, and Sub-Zero. Smoke and Sub-Zero refuse and leave the clan, but Smoke is captured and turned into one of these soulless machines, now programmed to hunt down and kill Sub-Zero. To escape this threat, Sub-Zero joins the rebellion against Shao Kahn. Scorpion decides to side with the Earthrealm warriors to protect Sub-Zero. The last character to join the upcoming Mortal Kombat tournament is Shiva, a Shokan following Shao Kahn's orders and whose mission is to protect Queen Sindel. 
However, Shiva doesn't fully trust the Outworld Emperor's intentions and makes plans to turn on him should things go south. Despite Shao Kahn's best efforts, Liu Kang and the Rebellion successfully stop the Outworld's invasion. Not only is Earthrealm safe, but the realm of Edenia is also free from Outworld control. Kitana, the stepdaughter of Shao Kahn and daughter of Queen Sindel, manages to reach her mother. The Emperor put a spell on Sindel, making her forget everything about her past so she has complete loyalty to him. Kitana reminds her mother about the past, who takes her rightful place on the Edenian throne. She vows to rebuild her realm and bring down Shao Kahn for his crimes. In 1997, Mortal Kombat Mythology's Sub-Zero sheds more light on the story of the original Sub-Zero, Bihan. The story of this spin-off Mortal Kombat game is set before the events that took place in the original Mortal Kombat. Sub-Zero was hired by a sorcerer named Quan Chi to get a map leading to a mysterious amulet. To maximize his chances of getting that map, Quan Chi also hires Sub-Zero's rival, Scorpion from the Shirai Ryu clan. Sub-Zero kills Scorpion and gives Quan Chi the map, who rewards him by wiping out his enemies from the Shirai Ryu clan. Quan Chi asks the assassin to follow the map to the Temple of Elements to retrieve his precious amulet, only to snatch it from Sub-Zero's hands and reveal his true intentions. The amulet is the source of power from a fallen elder god named Shinnok, who once tried to take over Earthrealm but was defeated by Raiden and sent to the Netherrealm. Quan Chi disappears with the amulet, leaving Sub-Zero to face the wrath of Raiden who learned that the two stole Shinnok's amulet from the Temple of Elements. Raiden sends Sub-Zero to retrieve the amulet in the Netherrealm, where he fights various opponents to catch up with Quan Chi who seemingly dies at the hand of his former ally, Serena. Back to the main entries in the series, with the release of Mortal Kombat 4 in 1997. Shinnok managed to escape the Netherrealm with the help of Quan Chi and is now seeking revenge against the Elder Gods, ready to crush anything or anyone standing in his way. Shinnok's first target is Edenia, the poor realm that always gets captured by the bad guys. Tanya, the daughter of an Edenian ambassador, betrays her realm by convincing Queen Sindel to welcome Shinnok and his highest generals as refugees. The fallen Elder God then launches a full-scale invasion of Edenia and captures Queen Sindel and her daughter, Princess Katana. Edenia was just a first step. Shinnok attacks the heavens, killing three of the four elemental gods. Only Fujin, the god of wind and younger brother to Raiden, manages to escape with the help of the Shaolin monks Liu Kang and Kai. To stop Shinnok in his evil plans, Raiden summons the Earthrealm warriors who defeated Shao Kahn in the previous games. Raiden and the Earthrealm fighters manage to defeat Shinnok's warriors. The former Elder God God faces Liu Kang in combat, but the Mortal Kombat champion wins the fight. Raiden banishes Shinnok back to the Netherrealm, ending his killing spree and bringing peace back to Earthrealm and Edenia. Raiden gets the status of Elder God, turning over his position as Earthrealm's protector to his brother Fujin. Everyone is happy. Katana and Liu Kang continue their romance, and the other combatants resume their regular life. Meanwhile, Scorpion finds out that Quan Chi is responsible for the death of his family and tortures the sorcerer in the depths of the Netherrealm. In 2000, Mortal Kombat Special Forces follows the adventures of Jax Briggs as he chases after Kano and his Black Dragon criminal organization. Kano managed to free his gang from a maximum security prison and is trying to get his hands on an artifact called the Eye of Chi Tien. Jax, who has a personal grudge against Kano and the Black Dragon organization after they slaughtered his Special Forces friends, decides to stop them from getting that artifact and bring them back behind bars. Jax eventually defeats Kano and discovers that the Eye of Chi Tien holds the ability to open portals between realms. The next main entry in the Mortal Kombat franchise comes in 2002 with the release of Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance begins after Scorpion takes Quan Chi with him to the Netherrealm at the end of Mortal Kombat 4. The sorcerer manages to escape using the Amulet of Shinnok, the powerful artifact the original Sub-Zero stole for him in Mortal Kombat Mythology's Sub-Zero. While Quan Chi pretended to give Shinnok his amulet back after retrieving it from the Temple of Elements, he actually gave the former Elder God a replica while keeping the real amulet for himself. Once out of the Nether Realm, Quan Chi finds a tomb filled with the mummified remains of Onaga the Dragon King's army, former ruler of Outworld that was poisoned by Shao Kahn. To help him revive this powerful army, Quan Chi makes a deal with Shang Tsung. He will provide Shao Kahn's right-hand man with an endless source of souls to make him immortal, if the sorcerer agrees to transplant warrior souls into the mummified remains of the Dragon King's army. Shang Tsung accepts this offer, and nothing seems to be able to stop this deadly alliance. To enact their plan of raising an army and taking control of the realm, Quan Chi and Shang Tsung need to get rid of the only two characters that could stop them, Mortal Kombat Champion Liu Kang and Outworld Emperor 
Shao Kahn. They snap Liu Kang's neck and consume his soul to resurrect the Dragon King's army and seemingly kill Shao Kahn. We'll later learn that the Deadly Alliance only killed one of Kahn's clones, but this doesn't impact their plans for now. Raiden wants to stop the Deadly Alliance from killing everyone and taking control of the realms, so he asks the Elder Gods to intervene. They refuse, believing in free will and not seeing any threat to the order they established. Raiden is pretty angry with this decision and decides to give up his Elder God status before returning to Earthrealm to gather the heroes once again to face this new threat. Jax Briggs, Johnny Cage, Kung Lao, Sonya Blade, and Katana all die in battle. Raiden tries to defeat the Deadly Alliance, but the duo is too powerful, even for the Thunder God. Mortal Kombat that deception picks up the story as the Deadly Alliance finally manages to revive the Dragon King's undefeatable army. The duo turns against each other, with Shang Tsung stealing Shinnok's amulet from Quan Chi, in fear that his partner would dump him after he's done transplanting the souls. The two former allies fight to take control of their undead army, when to their horror they realize that Onaga, the Dragon King himself, has returned. Onaga has one goal, use the six Kamidogu that were created when the Elder Gods shattered the One Being to merge all realms together and bring back this powerful entity. The Dragon King manipulated a man named Shujinko to get the Kamidogu, and now he needs one last element, Shinnok's amulet. Quan Chi and Shang Tsung try to stop Onaga, but they're no match for the Dragon King. In an attempt to prevent him from destroying all realms, Raiden concentrates his powers on a single blast that destroys everything in its wake. Everything except for Onaga, who emerges from the blast unharmed. As the Dragon King now possesses Shinnok's amulet and the Kamidogu, he comes back to Outworld to reassume his throne as the original ruler of the realm. From there, he wants to merge the six Kamidogu into a single one, creating the ultimate weapon that could reshape all realms. Raiden's blast was so powerful that it destroyed the Thunder God himself. He reconstitutes himself back on Earth Realm, but his essence is tainted by Onaga's evil. This corruption leads Raiden to become furious with the way Earth Realm's inhabitants had treated their own realm, turning Raiden into Dark Raiden, a ruthless version of himself ready to crush anyone who threatens his homeland. Shujinko, the man manipulated by Onaga to retrieve the Kamidogu, swears to get his revenge on the Dragon King. After decades spent collecting the Kamidogu, Shujinko is one of the most powerful warriors of all time. Onaga also granted him a special power to help him in his quest, the ability to copy the powers of anyone he fights. Shujinko gathers some of the best warriors of all realms and absorbs their power. He manages to shatter the Kamidogu and beat the Dragon King, allowing Nightwolf to use his ancestral knowledge to trap Onaga's soul in the Nether Realm. In 2005, mid Midway released another spin-off after the events of the first Mortal Kombat game. At the end of the first Mortal Kombat tournament, several fights break out with Sonya Blade, Johnny Cage, and Sub-Zero on one side, and Kano, Reptile, and Scorpion on the other. Liu Kang faces Shang Tsung, who tries to consume the Shaolin monk's soul. Kung Lao comes to save his cousin and fights against Baraka. Goro comes in to fight everyone in sight. The chaos causes Shang Tsung's palace to start crumbling. The sorcerer creates a portal to teleport Baraka, Goro, Reptile, Kano, and Scorpion to Outworld. Raiden and the Earthrealm War Warriors retreat to the Wuxi Academy. They can't enjoy their victory in the Mortal Kombat tournament for long, as Baraka and the Tarkadans attack the Wuxi Academy. The Earthrealm Warriors stop the attack, but Baraka manages to capture Sanya and take her to Outworld. This kidnapping is a trick to lure Liu Kang and his allies to Outworld to defeat them so they won't stop Outworld from conquering Earthrealm. Liu Kang and Kung Lao travel to Outworld to stop Shao Kahn and save Sanya, with the help of Raiden and Johnny Cage. As they successfully defeat their enemies, rescue Sanya, and defeat Shang Tsung, they discover the mastermind behind this attack, Shao Kahn, the Emperor of Outworld who wants to take control of Earthrealm. Over the course of all the previous Mortal Kombat games, the fighters became so strong that their powers now threaten to destroy the fabric of the entire Mortal Kombat universe. If they keep on fighting, they could rip apart reality and cause the apocalypse. Enter Mortal Kombat Armageddon, released in 2006. Long before the events of the games, a powerful sorceress from Edenia called Queen Delia foresaw the end of the world at the hands of powerful combatants. To prevent them from destroying the universe, she prepared a plan with the help of her husband, Argus. They put their sons Taven and Dagon in incubation until the time comes to save the world from Armageddon. Preventing the end of the world should be pretty easy. Taven and Dagon only need to defeat an elemental created by Delia called Blaze. The Earthrealm and Outworld heroes are fighting as usual, when suddenly a pyramid rises from the ground. 
Its tip bursts into flames, and Blaze the Elemental appears. To restore balance in the universe, Blaze wants to destroy as many combatants as possible. He challenges them to a battle, and of course, the bloodthirsty combatants won't turn down a fight. Instead of teaming up to defeat Blaze and save the realms, Taven and Dagon turn on each other as they discover a message from their father Argus saying that whoever kills Blaze first will take his place as an Elder God. Taven defeats Dagon, but doesn't want to kill Blaze before finding out why they were chosen to beat the Elemental and save the universe. Blaze reveals that only one of the brothers can kill him, as they each have a special armor bestowed by their parents. The fate of the world depends on which brother defeats the elemental. His death will either destroy all warriors or strip them of their powers and abilities. But the canon ending of Mortal Kombat Armageddon doesn't even care about Taven and Dagon and their special armor. The most popular villain from the Mortal Kombat series, Shao Kahn, is back. After tricking the Deadly Alliance into killing one of his clones, he claimed back his throne of Emperor of Outworld, and now wants to kill Blaze to seize his godlike powers and finally become the master of the universe. As all fighters are trying to get to the top of the pyramid, Shao Kahn manages to defeat Blaze and gain his powers. Raiden tries to stop him, but the Outworld Emperor is too powerful. Before Shao Kahn kills Raiden, the Thunder God sends a message to his younger self through his amulet in hopes of preventing the end of times. He must win. Before finding out what this message means, and what happens to everyone in the Mortal Kombat universe, Midway Games decided to release an official yet non-canonical game in 2008, Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe. As its name suggests, this spin-off pits the Mortal Kombat fighters against DC superheroes, such as Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. Unfortunately, Quan Chi vs. Catwoman or Scorpion vs. Lex Luthor never made it to the official Mortal Kombat storyline. Back to the official fate of the Mortal Kombat universe, Raiden's message to his past self at the end of Armageddon creates a new timeline that begins with the reboot of the original Mortal Kombat trilogy in 2011. Everything from the previous games doesn't really exist anymore. The reboot takes us back to the first Mortal Kombat tournament, where the Earthrealm heroes are teaming up to prevent Goro from winning a 10th Mortal Kombat victory for Outworld. Raiden receives the message from his Armageddon's future self, with the cryptic message, he must win. Okay, but who should win, and why? Raiden is confused by this message, but now has the knowledge of everything that will happen in the next decades, including the end of the world. When Raiden tries to figure out how to save everybody, the other combatants do everything as they did in the original Mortal Kombat trilogy. Liu Kang wins the tournament, Sindel is resurrected, and Shao Kahn invades Earthrealm. Raiden tries various strategies to prevent Armageddon. He prevents smoke from being turned into a soulless machine by the Lin Kuei assassin clan, only for Kwai Liang, the younger brother of the original Sub-Zero to be captured and turned into a cybernetic ninja instead of smoke. When Shao Kahn invades Earthrealm, Raiden saves Johnny Cage from the extermination squads. Just like in the original timeline, he tries to ask the Elder Gods for help, but they won't intervene. When Raiden and Liu Kang come back from their meeting with the Elder Gods, they discover bloodshed on Earthrealm. Sindel launched a devastating attack that caused many casualties, including Katana who dies in Liu Kang's arms. Nightwolf sacrifices himself to kill Sindel and stop this chaos. Raiden finally understands understands what his future self meant by he must win. If Shao Kahn wants to conquer Earthrealm, he must win 10 consecutive Mortal Kombat tournaments. Meanwhile, Liu Kang can't get over the death of his friends. He blames Raiden for this and decides to take on Shao Kahn alone. The Thunder God tries to stop Liu Kang but accidentally kills him. Raiden surrenders to the Emperor of Outworld. Shao Kahn begins to merge the two realms when the Elder Gods finally show up. Since Outworld never won the 10 consecutive Mortal Kombat tournaments required to merge with Earthrealm, Shao Kahn is breaking Breaking the sacred rules of Mortal Kombat. The Elder Gods possess Raiden's body to help him defeat the Outworld Emperor. Earthrealm is returned to normal despite the many casualties caused by the Outworld's attack. Raiden, who successfully prevented Armageddon even if he lost most of his friends, vows to rebuild his realm. While this could be the end of this 2011 Mortal Kombat reboot, there is one plot twist left. Quan Chi appears to be working under the orders of Shinnok. With both Earthrealm and Outworld severely weakened and many dead combatants that Quan Chi can revive, the fallen Elder God is planning on conquering both realms. Two years later, Quan Chi and Shinnok put their plans into action in Mortal Kombat 10. The sorcerer uses the souls of those who died during the Earthrealm invasion to create a powerful undead army. Shinnok attacks Earthrealm with his army of Netherrealm demons and Quan Chi's revenants. The fallen Elder God wants to corrupt the Jinsei, Earth's life force. 
Johnny Cage, Sonya Blade, Kenshi Takahashi, Fujin, and Raiden try to fight against the demons and revenants attacking Earthrealm. Quan Chi brings back well-known characters, turning Sub-Zero, Sindel, and Smoke into revenants, among many others. As the Earthrealm warriors fight against Shinnok, the fallen Elder God takes the upper hand and attempts to kill Sonya. Johnny tries to protect her and awakens unexpected ancient superpowers, allowing him to fend off the Elder God long enough for Raiden to steal Shinnok's amulet and imprison him inside of it. With Shinnok defeated, Quan Chi retreats to Netherrealm. The Earthrealm warriors chase him to his lair and manage to restore Scorpion, Sub-Zero, and Jax to their human form, but Quan Chi escapes. Life goes back to normal for the Earthrealm heroes. Johnny and Sonya marry and have a daughter, Cassie, but divorce a few years later. Scorpion uses his original name, Hanzo Hizashi, to rebuild his Shirai Ryu clan while mentoring Kenshi's son, Takeda. Sub-Zero kills Sector and becomes the new Grandmaster of Lin Kuei. Flash forward two decades later. An older Johnny assembles a team of young fighters composed of Johnny and Sonya's daughter Cassie, Takeda, Jax's daughter Jackie, and Kung Lao's nephew Kung Jin. This squad goes off to Outworld to resolve a civil war between the former Empress Melina, who obtained Shinnok's amulet from Kano, and Outworld's current emperor, Kotal Kahn. They help Kotal recover the amulet and capture Melina, who is executed on the Emperor's orders. As Shinnok's amulet was stolen while under Earthrealm's protection, Kotal decides to keep it safe in Outworld, and kidnaps Cassie and her friends as leverage against Raiden. The amulet doesn't stay safe for long, as Kotal's second-in-command, Devora, appears to be a double agent working for Quan Chi and steals the amulet. Cassie and her team escape and warn the other Earthrealm fighters of Devora's intentions. Jax and Kenshi, helped by a former servant of Quan Chi named Serena, track the sorcerer to his Netherrealm lair. They capture Quan Chi and place him at an Outworld refugee camp on Earthrealm. Hanzo, formerly known as Scorpion, still has a score to settle with Quan Chi, as the sorcerer killed his wife and child. He infiltrates the refugee camp, and as he's about to kill Quan Chi, Devora appears with Shinnok's amulet. Quan Chi manages to cast a spell to release Shinnok from captivity just before Hanzo beheads him. Shinnok and Devora capture Johnny and launch an attack on the Sky Temple, subduing Raiden and his ally Boraicho in the process. Shinnok reaches the Jinsei, corrupts Earthrealm's life force, and transforms himself into a powerful demon. Cassie's team goes after Shinnok, but Kotal Kahn and his army stop them. The Outworld Emperor wants to please the fallen Elder God and buy some time for his realm by killing the Earthrealm forces. Sub-Zero and his Lin Kuei warriors rescue Cassie and her team, letting them continue their journey to the Jinsei chamber. When they arrive, Devora is torturing Johnny. Cassie unleashes superpowers similar to her father's to save him and defeat Shinnok. Raiden strips the fallen Elder God of his power powers once more, and purifies the Jinsei. Unfortunately for the Thunder God, the Jinsei was corrupted by Shinnok's Dark Essence. When he purifies Earthrealm's life force, Raiden becomes corrupted and turns into Dark Raiden, just like in the original timeline. He has a blind rage against anyone threatening Earthrealm and holds Shinnok's amulet, making him stronger than ever before. He warns the revenants Liu Kang and Katana, now rulers of Netherrealm, that if they ever threaten Earthrealm, they will face fates worse than death. And to reinforce his threat, he leaves behind the seven but still living head of Shinnok. In 2019, Mortal Kombat 11 continues this story. The new installment in the franchise reveals another type of primordial beings that predate the Elder Gods, other races, and the realms themselves, Titans. The Titans are far more powerful than the Elder Gods and appeared right after the One Being. We don't know much about Titans except for one of them, Kronika, the Keeper of Time and Mother of Shinnok. Upon learning that Dark Raiden beheaded her son, Kronika wants to rewrite history and erase Raiden's existence as she believes he is disrupting the balance between the forces of good and evil. Two years later, Cassie becomes the new Special Forces Commander as Jax retires. Shortly after, Dark Raiden appears to warn them that Liu Kang and Katana are planning to invade Earthrealm. The Special Forces decide to strike first and launch an assault against Netherrealm's main cathedral. Dark Raiden creates a diversion to allow the Special Forces to enter the cathedral and defeat the Outworld forces led by Jade and Cabal. Liu Kang and Katana ambush the Special Forces to defend their homeworld against the Earthrealm's assault, resulting in Sonya getting trapped under an avalanche of rocks. After ordering her daughter to take her squad back to Earthrealm, Sonya blows herself up and destroys the cathedral. Kronika appears before the Revenant Liu Kang and Katana to request an alliance with the rulers of the Netherrealm. She wants to restart history and create a new era, rid of Raiden's presence. Liu Kang and Katana accept to team up with the Titaness in hopes of protecting their realm from Dark Raiden's wrath. Kronika reverses time, rebuilding the Netherrealm Cathedral and removing Dark Raiden from 
from existence. Doing so cancels several fights between good and evil forces, therefore cancelling the death of several characters who suddenly reappear. Meanwhile, Kotal Khan, the current emperor of Outworld, wants to execute Collector, a debt collector for Shao Kahn. He's interrupted by a time storm that brings Shao Kahn, Scarlet, Baraka, and younger versions of Kano, Aaron Black, Jade, Raiden, Katana, Liu Kang, Johnny Cage, Sonya Blade, Jax, Scorpion, Cabal, and Kong Lao from the past. Dark Raiden is erased from existence, leaving behind Shinnok's amulet. When he discusses what's going on with Kotal, Raiden realizes they were all teleported 27 years in the future. Past and present are colliding, creating a new timeline. Shao Kahn's forces begin to fight against Kotal to reclaim the Outworld throne. Kotal defeats Shao Kahn and his allies. Devora arrives and brings Shao Kahn's forces and Collector to her hive, recruiting them into Kronika's army. Back on Earthrealm, Raiden and Sonya learn what happened to their future selves. Liu Kang and Kung Lao discover that their alter egos are undead revenants of the Nether Realm. Earthrealm and Outworld forge an alliance against their common threat, Kronika. Garrus, Kronika's henchman, manages to steal powerful energy capsules containing Earthrealm's life force, the Jinsei. Liu Kang and Kung Lao try to stop him, but Garrus uses his chronokinetic powers to escape. He leaves both Shaolin monks unharmed, as killing them would destroy their revenant counterparts and Kronika needs them to enact her plan. Raiden goes to the heavens to meet with the Elder Gods and ask for their assistance in stopping Kronika. Cetrion tells him that they cannot interfere and stop Kronika from creating her new era. The Elder Gods are useless once again, and Raiden needs to figure out how to save the Mortal Kombat universe by himself. The special forces learn that Sector, Frost, and the original Sub-Zero noob Cybot are building a cyborg army for Kronika. Cyrax, who came back from the past and is still loyal to the Cyber Lin Kuei, helps them create a new set of cyborg assassins. Hanzo and Sub-Zero defeat them, free Cyrax from the Cyber Lin Kuei's influence, and destroy the facility. Frost, Noob, and Sector retreat to Kronika's lair. Raiden, Kotal, Jade, and Katana are looking for a way to stop Shao Kahn from reclaiming the Outworld throne. They locate the former Emperor and defeat Revenant Jade, Devora, and Collector on the way. As Kotal is getting ready to wipe out the Tarkatan camp housing Shao Kahn, Jade defeats him. The former Outworld Emperor captures Kotal and sends him to the Colosseum for execution. Katana, helped by Baraka and Shiva, saves Kotal. He tries to fight Shao Kahn, but the former Emperor is too strong and breaks Kotal's back, crippling him. Katana defeats Shao Kahn and blinds him. As Kotal was fatally crippled by Shao Kahn, he appoints Katana as the new Empress of Outworld. Raiden returns to the heavens to see if the Elder Gods are finally willing to do something. He finds the place empty, with all the Elder Gods dead. Cetrion, who happens to be Kronika's daughter, betrayed them. Raiden sends Jackie and the past version of her father Jax to Shang Tsung's now abandoned island, where the first Mortal Kombat game took place. They need to retrieve the Crown of Souls, a powerful artifact that will enhance Kronika's powers should she find it. Of course, they're not the only ones trying to find that crown. The father-daughter duo successfully defeats the Revenants Cabal and Jade, as well as Noob Saibot. Present day Jax also shows up to stop them. He made a deal with Kronika to protect Jackie and needs to get the crown. The younger Jax knocks out his older self and proceeds to escape the island with the Crown of Souls, his daughter, and his older self. They're stopped by Cetrion, who splits the ground in two and threatens to kill Jackie if Jax doesn't hand over the crown. Hanzo, the present-day Scorpion, needs to convince Charon, the ferryman of the Netherrealm Souls, to let his allies reach Kronika's fortress. As he reaches the ferryman, he finds Devora torturing him for refusing to assist Kronika. Hanzo defeats Devora and meets his past self, Scorpion, who tells him that Kronika could revive their deceased wife and son. The two scorpions clash, and Hanzo wins the fight, explaining to his past self that the only goal of Kronika is to revive Shinnok, the one responsible for their family's demise. As the two scorpions share their respective views on everything going on, Devora ambushes Hanzo and fatally poisons the ninja. His dying wish is for his past self to let go of his anger and join the rest of the Earthrealm warriors. Scorpion agrees and helps them locate Kronika. For the third time in the Mortal Kombat story, Raiden is filled with rage. Shinnok's amulet makes him more suspicious than ever and he attacks Scorpion on sight, believing he's a threat to Earthrealm's safety. Liu Kang stops him, and Raiden realizes that they already fought in multiple timelines. Kronika wants them to fight because their combined strength is the only thing that could stop her from creating the new era. As Raiden and Liu Kang stop fighting and want to team up against Kronika, the Titaness captures the Shaolin monk to keep him away from the Thunder God. The Earthrealm and Outworld armies team up to launch an assault against Kronika's fortress. 
They defeat Garrus and shut down Frost, disabling all the Cyber Lin Kuei cyborgs. The older Jax realizes he's been on the wrong side of this war and joins the hero's team. Meanwhile, Kronika took the kidnapped Liu Kang to his Revenant counterpart. Revenant Liu Kang absorbs his past self's soul and Kronika sends him to fight against Raiden. Her plan is to make Liu Kang and Raiden kill each other, which would prevent them from ever combining their powers and teaming up against her. As he's fighting against Revenant Liu Kang, Raiden understands that Kronika wants him to kill his former ally. Instead of achieving her plan, Raiden uses his powers to merge with both the Revenant and past Liu Kang, becoming the powerful Fire God Liu Kang. With the memory and knowledge of his Revenant self, Fire God Liu Kang knows everything about Kronika's plan and the location of her hideout. The Earthrealm and Outworld warriors break into Kronika's keep. The Titaness turns back time to its beginning to get rid of these intruders, but the godlike status of Fire God Liu Kang makes him immune to Kronika's time modifications. He defeats Kronika's allies as well as Cetrion, but the Titaness absorbs Cetrion's essence to become even more powerful. She turns back time to the Mesozoic Age, erasing everything that ever happened in the Mortal Kombat universe. Fire God Liu Kang defeats Kronika and meets a now mortal Raiden, who appoints him the new Earthrealm Protector and states that Fire God Liu Kang can now shape time however he sees fit. Fire God Liu Kang declares that he can't bear this burden alone, so Raiden offers to be his advisor for the rest of his mortal life. Following Kronika's defeat, Fire God Liu Kang and Raiden want to use her hourglass to restore history in Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath. As they're trying to understand how to put everything back in order, they're interrupted by the apparition of Shang Tsung, Fujin, and Nightwolf, who were all imprisoned in the void for refusing to join Kronika. They explain that Fire God Liu Kang cannot use the hourglass without Kronika's crown, or else he would destroy time instead of fixing it. And unfortunately, the crown was broken during the battle between the Titaness and the Fire God. Despite their lack of trust towards Shang Tsung, Raiden and Fire God Liu Kang agree to send him, Fujin, and Nightwolf back in time to retrieve Kronika's crown before Cetrion retrieves it. The trio arrives as Katana is about to face Shao Kahn in the Colosseum. As they need to battle against Cetrion, Shang Tsung determines that their best chance at winning is to resurrect Sindel once again, since she has no links to Kronika whatsoever. Their run to retrieve the crown is not a smooth one. They have to face Baraka, Eren Black, Jax, Noob Saibot, and the revenants of Cabal and Jade. They fight against Cetrion and Shang Tsung teleports the Elder God away. Shang Tsung sends Sindel back to Outworld at her request and comes back with Fujin to deliver the crown to Raiden and Fire God Liu Kang. Cetrion warns Kronika that she failed to retrieve her crown. Kronika gets mad at Shang Tsung for interfering in her project and vows to stop him. Shang Tsung and Fujin get back to Raiden as he's talking with Sub-Zero, past Liu Kang and Scorpion. Believing this is a trick from Shang Tsung, Sub-Zero attacks the Sorcerer. Raiden, under the influence of Shinnok's amulet, also attacks Shang Tsung. Fujin interferes in both fights, explaining Shang Tsung's role in retrieving Kronika's crown. Raiden realizes that Shinnok's amulet has a terrible influence on him and decides never to use it again. As Fujin explains Shang Tsung's plan to steal Kronika's crown and bring it to Fire God Liu Kang, the Titaness appears. She freezes everyone in time except Raiden, Shang Tsung, and Fujin. She warns them that the crown was Shang Tsung's design, and that he he will eventually betray the Earthrealm warriors. They send Kronika away, stating that if Shang Tsung ever betrayed them, they would end him. Sindel, who was transported back to Outworld by Shang Tsung, reunites with her lover Shao Kahn. When Shang Tsung brought her back to life, she didn't get her memory back and remained faithful to the Outworld leader. Garrus asks Sindel and Shao Kahn to join Kronika's crew, but they refuse, and opt to take control of the crown to rule the realms themselves. They defeat Sonya, Cassie, and pass Johnny, catch up with Katana's ship across the Sea of Blood, throw Kung Lao overboard and fight against Kotal and Jade. Katana begs her mother to snap out of it and realize that she's under Shao Kahn's control. Sindel reveals that she willingly married Shao Kahn and that she helped him kill her previous husband. Katana battles against her mother but loses the fight while Shao Kahn defeats Liu Kang. To stop Sindel and Shao Kahn, Raiden asks Fujin to give him the crown. His brother obliges but soon realizes it was Shang Tsung impersonating Raiden to get it. Kronika was right. The sorcerer betrayed them. Shang Tsung wears the crown, stating that he's now equal to Kronika herself. Self. With his newfound powers, Shang Tsung easily defeats Raiden, Fujin, Jax, and Nightwolf. He even turns his back on his old allies, Sindel and Shao Kahn. He drains everyone's strength to become even more powerful and confronts Kronika. Shang Tsung defeats the Titaness and absorbs her soul. As Shang Tsung is getting ready to use the crown to bend time and reshape the realms, Fire God Liu Kang comes down from the dawn of time to confront him. Shang Tsung realizes the Fire God knew all about his plan since the beginning and willingly let his friends die to make sure the crown wouldn't be broken so he could get it from Shang Tsung's dead body. Since Mortal Kombat 12 isn't out yet, we don't know which one of the two endings of Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath is canon. 
If Shang Tsung wins, he absorbs the soul of Fire God Liu Kang and forges his own new era, where Raiden and Fujin are his lackeys and he rules over the realms. However, if Fire God Liu Kang defeats Shang Tsung, he erases the sorcerer from existence, retrieves the crown, forges his new era, and goes back to his Shaolin Temple to train a new Mortal Kombat champion, the Great Kung Lao. Two Mortal Kombat games are expected to come out in 2023, Mortal Kombat Onslaught and Mortal Kombat 12. Onslaught is the fourth Mortal Kombat spin-off game and will release on Android and iOS. We don't know anything about the story of this game, but it won't be a fighting game. Developer Ed Boon stated that Mortal Kombat Onslaught will be a strategic team-based collection RPG with fast-paced group melee combat, but we'll have to wait a little bit longer to find out everything this new title has to offer. The most anticipated Mortal Kombat game coming out in 2023 isn't Onslaught though, but the next main entry in the franchise, Mortal Kombat 12. This upcoming game will continue the story after Shang Tsung and Fire God Liu Kang's battle, settling the fate of the entire Mortal Kombat universe. Did Shang Tsung manage to turn Raiden and Fujin into his slaves? Did Fire God Liu Kang save everyone and forge his new era? That wraps up the story of Mortal Kombat so far. Which combatant is your favorite? Let us know down in the comments. If you learned anything from this video, please hit that like button and make sure to subscribe to the leaderboard for more gaming content.